Welcome, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to episode numero eight of the Apron Bumps Wrestling Podcast. It is myself, Braster, Braden Mayhew, your wonderful main host, along with my co-host, Mr. Gabe Nozid, the wonderful, wonderful Mr. Gabe Nozid. How are you doing tonight, uh, Tuesday night on May 5th, Mr. Gabe? Um, happy Cinco de Mayo, Braden. Mm. I didn't even think of that, to be honest. <laughs> I know. Uh, time's going by super fast. It's been like, what, almost two months, a month and a half already of quarantine. So. For me, it's been like a month and a half already that I've been yeah. in self-isolation. So, yeah. It's crazy. It'll but be... um, mm-hmm. we'll keep it going here. Uh, and that's all we can really do. And as, as, as usual, WWE is going to keep going <laughs> with yeah. their uh, operations. Well, you see, Essential folk... business. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, woven into the fabric of society, I've been told, right? So, Florida uh, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we the, the wrestling news has been kind of slow, and the, the shows have been very much paint by number for the last couple of weeks, which is why we've been kind of quiet, because they're really... Unless you just want us to rehash a show you might have watched or didn't watch. We didn't think it was maybe worth discussing anything in the last couple of weeks with how everything's been going on. Not that it's particularly bad. I mean, it still fills a void for me on Monday and Wednesday nights. But it's still, it's the, the content of the shows is not what it is, and it's not nearly as exciting. So saving uh, discussion for pay-per-views seems to be a good idea right now, unless there's some huge, big, <laughs> big-time big news like a mass firing or something like that that we can really discuss and, and deep dive into. But the last few weeks really have been kind of dry in terms of news that I've found. How about you, Gabe? What do you think well, of the, the well, landscape? For those who haven't been watching wrestling and if they want us to rehash it, all that's really been happening is uh, Chris Jericho bearing uh, Suge D and calling him Pineapple Pete whenever he's on screen. So that's like the only news to really talk about. <laughs> Yeah, well, then Kenny Omega had a competitive match with a jobber. I remember people getting up in arms about that on Dynamite. Um, I still have no idea what they're doing for their world title picture. They've set nothing up, and Double or Nothing is fast approaching, and they've not set up any world title match or challenger for Moxley. So it's like... But they have been putting a good amount of effort into that TNT championship tournament. So yeah, I'll, that's I'll give like them the that much. Storyline right now. Yeah, it's like the only thing that's being given any sort of like, and I mean, it's a secondary title, right? And it's a title yeah. that Cody can challenge for, like in kayfabe. So I mean, it's obviously a big deal since I I think they might have him be the first to hold it too. I think there's a good chance he wins the tournament, but we can I talk mean, about he that. He did reignite the uh, mm. IC title. Yeah, you know? so he, he's a man who knows what he's doing with a secondary belt and. He knows he can't. He's banned from competing for the world title in storylines. So this is they're they're really building it as like this is Cody's. This is his chance for a championship that he can compete for. So it's it's mm-hmm. been pretty good there on the raw front. I can give them credit for one thing. We might as well just talk about uh, just kind of sum up the last three weeks. Before yeah, of we course. Get, yeah, you know. So the last couple weeks, uh, I know the ratings have been dropping, but my interest has been kind of decent because they're now due to a lot of top talent not feeling comfortable doing these tapings, they're being forced to use new faces on Raw, which I've been I've been noticing a lot of young talent being given opportunity to compete on national television. And I know it took a crisis to get there and top talent staying home, but WWE is being forced to show the likes of, um, say, Andrade and his camp every week, you know, Austin Theory and, and Angel Austin Garza. Theory, yeah. I think Angel Garza has really benefited from this whole thing with, with being there every week and being shown off every week. And I just, I the amount of new faces that are being shown on Raw, I mean, you got, uh, sure, it's not a good demotion for Ricochet to go from losing to Brock Lesnar to teaming with Cedric Alexander, but, like, at least it's giving the both of them something to do, and they've been kind of gelling as a tag team. Um I find like like Raw is being forced like all the part timers aren't showing up for these these things now so it's like Not they're they're yet. being forced to use the new talent that that's there and is willing to work at these tapings and that during to, these hard times yeah like... and so to me that speaks volumes and it makes the show a little more interesting apparently in the numbers it's not showing that way the ratings have been going down but I attribute that more to a lack of enthusiasm from an, a live audience that loses investment among casual viewers casual viewers of sports want a crowd that's just how it is they want to feel the energy of the people watching from the camera side or whatever so they can help get invested in a show it's especially important for wrestling drama because a great crowd can make a guy at home that much more invested in a match so i think 
that literally the only people they're going to have watching these shows is people like myself or you who are super invested in hardcore and using it to fill some time to fill a podcast or whatever. But like, as far as the casual audience is concerned, the lack of crowds is really, it's, it's not gelling with, with viewer numbers, but I have been enjoying the use of, of new talent on raw every week, even if the numbers aren't, uh, aren't in favor of what's being going on. But again, I, I attribute that lack of drama and lack of a crowd making casuals lose interest. What do you think about that whole circumstance? No, I, I think you're totally right, Brain. Like, obviously, <clears throat> that's why Dynamite is, like, working for me because they do have, you know, an audience, quote-unquote, and um, that's... Uh, I know that's also their talent that they have, like some jobbers, you know, Pineapple Pete's there. But it's, it's definitely, you know, filling in that gap of an audience because, believe it or not, you know, there's there's, like, three fundamentals in storytelling and professional wrestling. There's the wrestlers, the referee, and also the audience. So that audience being absent for almost all of these uh, WWE tapings is uh, leaving a hole in this, uh, you know, wrestling format. So uh, that's why I think um, that's why you think as well that it's definitely not gelling for those at home because it's an empty audience. Yeah, it's just the, the atmosphere isn't there to get people invested and as I said, like there are some people who can look past that who are the hardest of the hardcore, like myself, who watch it for the art form anyway. But for people want 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 electricity with their sports, even if they're a exactly. stage sport or a legitimate sport, they want the electricity. And there's just no electricity right now because you can't be performing in front of people. So it's just a strange time. It's a rough time for the business, but it keeps moving forward. Uh, I have not been following SmackDown. I will be the first to admit that that's a show <laughs> I have been missing out on left and right the last few weeks, but I have been watching Raw. Dynamite has been solid as always. As you said, their clever use of using their own crew to react to matches kind of like makes it less awkward. I guess would be the way to put it, right? Makes it less silent. At least there's some noise being made yeah. that's not just the wrestlers grunting in the ring. So that's, they've been doing it the most smartly. And that's, I think that's why people can get into that show more is because it's a younger crew that are a little more creative and they're just, they're trying their best and they're a brand new company. So they got to try super hard and they're doing things their way. And it's, it's superior to, the WWE's way of just, uh, we're just going to do it in our performance center, just let athletes do their thing, and we're not going to do any plans because that would be that'd be over. I mean, who cares that, that the moves are choreographed? Who, if we put plants in the eye, it's going to look so fake, you know? Well, at least there'd be some reaction going on to what's being in the ring, like we've seen with AEW, but that's, that's, that's one thing. And then uh, I will be watching NXT this week because they're doing two title matches, and that's usually a pretty big thing for the show. Um, I think the show was taped a few, at least a week or two ago now. So if Adam Cole does indeed drop the belt to dream, uh, I guess you take what, like two weeks or a week or a week or two off his reign of his 300 someday title reign. But if he retains, yeah. he can, he might be the first guy to hold the NXT title for a year. And I think there's a lot I think of, he deserves to hold it. There. Yeah. I yeah, think he should hold long. it. I think, in fact, I think he should hold it until he can drop it in front of a live audience. Make his reign really meaningful out of this bad circumstance. You know what I mean? Like, well, make another it... bad mm. circumstance is dreams, like uh, allegations of like sending like explicit photos to to minors. Yes, so that is. That, I guess show. that's something we could talk about too. But it doesn't seem like you think they would have wouldn't have taped a, a match of him competing for the main championship if they were concerned about that allegation. It seems like they're just kind of blowing it, brushing it under the rug. Because th this taping would have definitely happened after those allegations came out. That's at least yeah. a couple weeks ago now, which is, falls in line to him challenging for the belt on this NXT taping. As I said, this taping happened at least a week or two ago, and that's when those allegations came forward. So if they were really that concerned about it, you wouldn't think he'd be put in a main event championship match, but here he is. You know? So they must not think of it as that seriously, or at least it's not being treated that seriously. You know, so, you know, it's just a big, you know, he said, she said stuff. Yeah, so it's, it, we will never really know, you know, unless we're there. Yeah. And I mean, it's hard when you're trying to prove cyberspace stuff, you know, like, yeah. a lot of hearsay and it's it's hard to prove. But it, they're not thinking it's too big of a deal because here he is challenging for NXT's main event title this Wednesday. And he has a good shot at winning it again. I would keep the belt on call until he can lose it in front of an audience. But We'll see what yeah, they do on Wednesday. That's what they should do. Also, I, I, I can't wait for me and you to be proven right when Charlotte Flair retains over Io Shirai 
on Wednesday night. I remember Brandon was 100% convinced that Io was going to get the belt. And they're going to give it to her this time. I'm like, have you not been watching the booking for for the show for the last year? You know, like, no, nah, I don't see her winning that belt, but the match should be very good. And I mean, I don't think Charlotte and Io ever had a one-on-one match before. So that's no. kind of enticing to watch because they're that's both... like the only thing that'll, you know, that she'll really benefit, I guess, if it's, I guess, a five star outing because but it's a but... match. I still believe like, OK, Rhea can definitely win that title back. Yeah, but the thing is, like, without an, an atmosphere, your your star ratings are all confuzzled because, like, atmosphere is yeah. half the rating or quarter to half a star rating for a match. It could still be great, but I don't think we're going to be seeing any five or six star classics without an audience, but that's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. So, but anyway, NXT should be interesting this week. For the first time in, like, we'll say, like, at least three, four months, I'm watching it over Dynamite. Usually I never watch NXT over Dynamite Live, but... Those two title matches, I want to see as they happen. Because here in Canada, we don't get NXT live. What happens is that they just show like an hour edit of what they deem to be the most important stuff from the show. Edited down to an hour before SmackDown and we watch it Friday night 7 to 8. So I won't be waiting for that. I'll actually watch it live as it happens on USA. So uh, Because I got like a a fire stick so I get a bunch of American and Canadian (laughs) programming mixed. (laughs) On uh, the Amazon Fire Sticks, so I'll be doing that on Wednesday. So, and that's that's pretty much what the last few weeks have been, folks. I just kind of summed it up for you as eloquently as I can. And uh, so, anyway, uh, the last couple weeks, obviously, have been towards building up to Money in the Bank, and we might as well go over the weirdest rules in Money in the Bank history before we go into the actual predictions for the show. So, apparently, it's going to be taking place at corporate headquarters. They're going to fight from the bottom of the building, like where you enter. Apparently go all the way top to the roof and they're going to brawl through all of WWE headquarters and then they make it onto the roof where apparently a ring is set up with both briefcases hanging and apparently it was noted in the last week or two that they're both going to happen simultaneously at the same time. So you're going to have men and women beating each other up. Are they going to be conscientious of each other's space? Are they going to be like, oh, you know, like... it's, It's too, like, you know fights going at the same time they have to you know it makes sense for them to cross over you know like mm-hmm. at least walk past them or something so it's very strange so, and the whole, the whole tagline for the pay-per-view has been climb the corporate ladder <laughs> is what they've been referring to it as just very very There's strange an, the, the other one is like uh the risk is worth the reward or something like yeah that. yeah yeah but that's just where the money in the bank's happening. So I assume just the regular championship matches are still happening at the Performance Center and that this this double money in the bank on Tondra is going to be slightly cinematic and shot and edited and all that sort of stuff, I imagine. That's what it, you know, that's what it feels like. And that's so. what it feels like to me. And then, they'll, yeah. like, I, I, I haven't noticed, but they didn't say this was live, right? Is this also going to be taped like WrestleMania? Or is there, are they claiming I, it's I going to be a live show? I don't think it's going to be live. There's no way. No way. At all. No. It can't be live because... because I know <clears throat> that they already did film the Money in the Bank matches. So okay. There's no way that's going to be live. Oh, so no. I didn't think live. that was going to be live because yeah. it's taking place at the, at the corporate headquarters. So I knew that was going to be pre-taped. And everything else has been pre-taped so far. And they say they're pre-taping stuff all the way through July. So I assume that equals this pay-per-view as well. So... But anyway, again, with everything being so locked down, you're not going to get the spoilers for the taping or anything like that. So we're going to go over the predictions as if this thing is happening live and in the moment anyway, because we're only going to see it when it goes tape to air. So it's this Sunday, for those of you who do not know. It's uh, uh, yeah, this Sunday night. And they have six matches <laughs> announced for the whole show so far. So it'll be easy to digest. It'll probably be three hours, two and a half hours max for a show. Unless they add another match on SmackDown this week, which would make this a very SmackDown heavy show. Because there's like three championship matches that are from SmackDown. There's one Raw championship match. And then the Money in the Bank matches are both um, dual branded. So there's only like one straight Raw match, which we will get to. But we'll start off with... Um, you know, we'll go from the undercard all the way up to the, the Money in the Bank. So there's a fatal four-way tag team match for the SmackDown Tag Team titles that was announced uh, last Friday. And it's The New Day, Biggie and Kofi Kingston defending against John Morrison and The Miz. The Forgotten Sons. Did you forget about them, Gabe? They're, they're, in, the, they're in this here match. I really didn't know they were in this match. <laughs> yeah, and then it's uh, they, they're announcing it as Steve Cutler, Wesley Blake, and or Jackson Riker. So they're saying any two of those three guys could be 
competing for the belt. So we don't even know which two representatives for sure of the Forgotten Sons are competing. And then the last team... New Day? Yeah, yeah. Well, except they, they, at least for New Day in this defense, they say Big E and Kofi are the ones defending it. So at least you know two members there, whereas we don't know which two Forgotten Sons are going to be competing. Not that anybody could possibly care. But... And there's the Lucha House Party, and speaking of not caring, but these guys are talented when they're given a shot, and the team that's representing the Lucha House Party is the team of Grand Metalik and Lince Dorado. So, that's the that's the, the Lucha, Lucha dudes that are represented in this uh, Fatal 4-Way SmackDown tag title match. I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I mean, it's just kind of, kind of there. I mean, Miz and Morrison are a thing, and... Unfortunately, our, our hopes of them dropping the belts and Morrison doing his own thing have not come to fruition yet. So that's kind yeah, of disappointing. I was about to bring that yeah. up. Like, it's, they were having, like, you know, he was having a great, like, you know, ladder match. And I thought that would, you know, prove to writers or at least Vince, you know, like, hey, let's split up, you know, because a Miz Morrison feud, we've never gotten that before. So, well, we did briefly, but it didn't happen for particularly long. They had like a couple one off title matches during Miz's WWE Championship reign, and nothing really long term. Because yeah, then, it, then it ended up just switching to Morrison and R Truth when R Truth turned heel. So it's like nothing really long term between the two of them. And I, I think, you know, Morrison's got the chops as a wrestler to be a big time single star if they, they push him properly, you know? So we, we keep repeating this. He's, he's yeah. destined for like a singles run. Um, if they, you know, grant it, like he's had mm-hmm. multiple world title, um, titles around his waist from other promotions. So it, it's just, if they'll let him do it, yeah. it looks like they're not being in this tag team match. Yeah. Well, it's just another month. We'll see what, it, but it's not looking good. Is what I'm, my point being, right? Like it's looking no, like he's just going to be stuck with the Miz as a duo. And that's what they're going to do with them. He's been with the Miz since he re-debuted. So yeah, ever since that's... he came back. Now, granted, that's only been like four months now, but st- <laughs> still I could say that's been four months. It's like, wow, you know, already it's still a long time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the forgotten sons are also in this match. Um, I don't know. Good for them, I guess, getting a call up during a pandemic. I mean, at least they're doing something, I guess, on SmackDown, I guess. I'm guessing they're, they're heels in this match. Yeah, still. they're they're, they're heels in this match. They've been heels since they've been on SmackDown, despite being American good guys for like a week on NXT. But I'm sure they expected it. Week. <laughs> it wasn't long. It couldn't have been long. I don't remember it lasting long because all of a sudden they're on SmackDown just doing the old shtick they were doing in NXT before they stood up against whoever it was that... They like they change it up to be good, and I don't know which is more successful because they're both like lame in their own right. <laughs> well, it's just like like I think Blake is like a decent worker, but he's got like no personality really. Colors, oh yeah, I think they're you, they're you know. all great workers. Like I can really see some yeah, great but, spots. But at least like like with, with with Riker, he was Gunner in TNA. For those of you who yeah. don't know, um, but like at least he looks like he has a presence and looks like he, he could maybe like. I don't, I don't want to say murder you or kill you, but, like, oh, yeah, he can he stare a dagger like, like, through you. He, he's yeah. got, like, a presence to him that Cutler and Blake just, I don't mean to rag on him, but they just don't have that, you know? So, it's like, like, Riker's kind of limited being, I don't want to say limited being with them, but, like, it's like you could be doing so much more with him, personally, than the other two, but that's just my opinion. <clears throat> And you've got Lucha House Party who really do nothing, and then they just get booked for tag title matches, like, twice a year. We've seen them at the Chamber earlier this year, and, I mean, they're they're clearly just here to fill a spot and do some, some I guess, hot, top rope action, like, like do some loot, good Lucha things in uh, <laughs> in in this match, because, like, really, nobody can expect the, the Lucha House Party to win the tag titles. Like, nobody can be going into this match thinking that's going to happen. Zero. Nobody. <laughs> what are your I, thoughts of them being in this uh, here tag title match? They're usually just put in, like you know situations just to fill a spot yeah that's it (laughs) is that's it um i i don't think uh, to be honest any of these guys will win the belts um, no other than new day no as i was just about to say i have new day retaining with flying colors here 100 percent because they're not going to drop them right back to miz and morris and maybe they can but i i just don't see it they they put the belts back on the new day for a reason and they're going to have them retain here they're the kings of the smackdown tag division i'm pretty sure they're doing that to um i don't know get more merch question mark yeah they're, maybe they're like they're merch machines you know for wwe so and that's the only uh, reason they've never been split up like every other freaking tag team in history 
Yeah, not at all. So So since they're successful merchandise sellers, they know they're safe together. And as I said, do you agree that 100% they retain here? Because I know that's my prediction. Yeah, definitely. Definitely they're going to retain. Okay, so next we have the SmackDown Women's Championship match. Bailey to defend against Tamina. So Tamina won a match against Sasha Banks like a couple weeks ago, and it earned her a match against Bailey at this pay-per-view. And yeah, nothing against Tamina, but she ain't the one to end Bailey's really long reign. I don't see it. <clears throat> do you uh, see? Uh, do you... It's 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 Tamina. Yeah, yeah that's what I, I know. It's Tamina. That's all, like, all you really have to say. Now, granted, there's no crowd or whatever, but does still. she have merch? Like, I don't think so. I've never, I've seen, never seen anybody wear a Tamina shirt ever. If there is one, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it exists. But good for her for getting a pay per view match for the title. But I don't yeah, see her a, winning a it. Singles match too. Mm. It's, it's no no fatal four way triple whatever. Yeah, no so. multi woman match. She got a singles match against Bailey on pay per view. Good for her. Good for getting that opportunity during a pandemic. Because I mean, without it, she would never be in the spot to begin with. We all know it. As I said, I'm praising some people for getting that spot and knocking others for getting it. But we all know that she would not be this prominent if it wasn't for the situation and other people sitting at home. And as a result, she's just kind of a lucky challenger for one pay-per-view, and she doesn't seem like the one to be the one to end Bailey's reign. It seems like, I don't know, I was thinking Lacey Evans was being put for that position, but uh, maybe she's not. But I definitely don't see Tamina doing it. I would be shocked if Tamina won the belt on Sunday. I'd be 100% oh, shocked. Oh, yeah, definitely shocked. <laughs> it's I don't know. She, if Tamina's ever going to win something, they got to build her up. I mean, I know they've been giving her, like, some... I know that before the Mania match, she had, like, a win or something. So, it's... They just got to build Tamina up more and more uh, to win a belt. And, obviously, she's not going to do that. <laughs> so She's kind of like the Lucha House Party, too, where you brought up that she's just a person who fills a spot once in a while. Like, like Oh, yeah. The, yeah she'll, the be, she'll be like a, 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 like a utility in a closet. And then, once in a while, they just, like, pull it out and, and use it when they realize they have it. Because she can go off for months without appearing on television. And she just pops up for a while and then she'll disappear again that's that was what was going on with her for like at least the last two years so it's like she just sort of shows up when they go oh yeah she's on the roster and she's big and she could be a challenger for something and yeah she's she's just big question mark i mean we already have naya jacks they're yeah. basically carbon copies just naya's bigger yeah pretty much the Moen, you know i that's mean tamina is what tamina is also like Samoan too, right? In a way, uh, she's like she's from F her, uh, Fiji, her, her, her. Yeah, her heritage is from Fiji. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> so, but anyway, I expect Bailey to retain the title here. At least, like that's my prediction for this uh, this here match. Yeah, same here. And it's, I don't expect much of it. Really... I don't expect like at least for the tag title, I could say, yeah, these guys could probably put something together that'll be entertaining. This because Bailey. Let's go into Bailey for a bit here. I mean, she's kind of getting her groove as, like, a heel worker now, but, like, she was just sort of there for, like, the longest time as yeah. a heel trying to make it work. Like, it's kind of working now. It's you know, You're kind of getting invested in her as a character, but I found, like, her matches were getting kind of dull throughout, like, oh, much yeah. of her... You know really, what I mean? Like, she just... She really are. Like, it's just... It's not... She had something special when she was the babyface in NXT, and it's just that she's not showing it much anymore. You know? She's like the baby face for NXT, and I just can't see her as anything else other than the face. And it's just, I mean, I thought it was cool when she turned, uh, mm -hmm. winning it what, from Charlotte, but it's just, I don't know, it's just her being a heel is slowly materializing, if if it is. It's just an odd, odd predicament, because Bailey's, you know, the baby face yeah, it's it's a sad circumstance because they, they botched her as a babyface so bad they felt that there was nothing else they could do to repair her except just have her go heel. That's on, that's on the bookers and the people putting, that's, that's the you know, you know what I mean? They like, didn't give her enough of a, a, you know, a rocket as the other, like, three horsemen. Like, I feel like Bailey is, you know, the, the fourth horsewoman that's lagging from the other three because I remember Sasha, Charlotte, and... um. Uh, they've been like switching the titles, ha uh, you know, hand in hand, and then um, Becky's finally getting a spot, but mm -hmm. Bailey is just. I don't know, flound floundering because. But it's funny we it's funny we, we say we she, she's floundering yet she's in the midst of the longest SmackDown Women's Title reign ever. The longest reign with that belt in history is the one well, Bailey has right now. It's funny we say she's floundering, but you like, could say she's successful. 
a good comparison, well, not the best, is uh, Jinder Mahal, you know? Oh, like, God. <laughs> him with the, the, the world title. I mean, yeah, I guess he won it from who Randy Orton. Yes, but, like, which first... that's a big deal. Like, I mean, he beat Orton for the belt. Like, Yeah, and it, none of it to, to any of us, any of the wrestling fans felt it was justified. We all knew it was a marketing scheme for India. Which never came to fruition. They traveled there, and it, they it never was a got bust. the numbers. It was a bust. That they wanted, so that's why they had AJ win it on a taped, on a taped SmackDown overseas in England. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's so. when they uh they they took the plug off of the, the gender train. Yeah, but, but it seems like they're back, right? yeah, and they're they're kind of pushing him again because they're giving him highlight packages. They're they're really hammering it home that he's a former world champion. He gets a quick squash on Raw. Like they, they seem to be wanting to like reposition him as like like him, at least an upper mid Carter. Which it's like uh, I don't know about that. We know how Jinder works on the top. He's he clearly ha- is like should be a career underneath guy, and it's nothing against him, but like he he, he just needs to be re rebranded in some way other than yeah I'm foreign you know Indian men you know. <laughs> but that's like the only way they like book like the foreign person right? It's just, I'm foreign. Ah, hate me. Well, that's that's WWE. That's uh, how they've been booking for I don't know, like almost, years, decades, like, decades. Like what? Yes, decades. Yeah, like, like we're at WrestleMania. It'll be what thirty-seven next year. So like we're we're pushing forty years here, people. <laughs> like, well, even over that. Like over I think that, yeah. I think Vince has been in charge even before like WrestleMania one, right? So it's like. Whenever he took over, because we're talking about him, like the, the stuff what his dad booked was way different and way more territorial than his global, like, oh, let's take over every promotion ever, and we can get into that on some other other, other time. But, yeah, it's just how they book, and apparently they're going to give Jinder another crack at being a pushed and used superstar on television. But, again, I think it's more because he's willing to work during this pandemic, and that's why he's getting featured again. I think he's getting lucky due to the circumstance. And speaking, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you have anything else to say about that, or um, f- for the match, uh, I'll just say at most eight minutes <laughs> mm, for yeah. a time. Like, yeah. I hope, I hope this is first or second something to get out the way. Yeah. So, as I said, uh, <sighs> Bailey, you know, she's, she's she's under circumstances or whatever. She's holding on to that belt, and I think she's going to hold on to it longer. And speaking of people who are lucky based on circumstances. And we move on to the Universal Championship match. Braun Strowman to defend against Bray Wyatt. Is it just Bray, like, 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 in his sweater and that version of Bray? That's what it's yeah, like. yeah. Is it just going to be him, like, like it was at TLC with Miz? He just shows up? Yeah, I feel like that's the only way because I feel like that's a smart decision if it is. I hope The Fiend doesn't come out because that would kill, you know. You know the Braun Strowman win from Mania that quick, and then I expect you know, his I expect his win to be killed that quick though. Well, uh, when there's a you know, I mean I don't know if Break should win the belt that quickly after Braun wins the belt, you know, because it's uh. But uh, Braun Strowman is you know I feel like he's he he needs to be given a shot, you know. I don't think he should be Zack Ryder, you know, like his IC reign. Yeah, well, I mean, Braun's already had it for over a month now, though. Well, that's the world title. I think, he, I mean, it's Braun Strowman, too. I think he can really, you know, give him more time. Well, given how belt. long he held the IC belt for, I can't see him even holding the world title long, man. You know, and, like, Bray had to lose it so Goldberg could be featured at Mania. And I think they're wanting to repair that by giving him the championship back, especially because I don't see any other titles changing hands on this particular night so i figure you got to give the people at least one title change which of these belts looks the most likely to change to me well it definitely would be the universal title with bray wyatt challenging for it well of course well i mean brain there's also have been uh pay-per-views that haven't had any changes at all that's true so i wouldn't be surprised if nothing changed you know because that's we for you Mm-hmm. But I, I just think it makes the most sense because you know braun Strowman and bray wyatt they have a history and mm-hmm. i think they should, you know, make this grow a bit more because, you know, uh, they need to branch it out a bit more um, through his, uh, yeah, just squash the Bray Wyatt, uh, you know, Firefly Funhouse character. And then that's when the Fiend could really come out. And then whenever they think it's ready, uh, just get the 
get him win the belt, and then bring back the ugly uh, $7,000 belt back for uh, oh, the Oh, God, feed. That, that thing. <laughs> Jeez, I completely forgot it existed. And that it was that pricey. Oh, man. But, yeah. That I bad and that pricey. <laughs> seems like they're... I mean, the reason I'd be hesitant to say Bray regains is because it seems like it's just him competing, like, in his sweater and pants and his Mr. Rogers getup, but, like... Shouldn't you have the fiend take on Braun? Like, shouldn't shouldn't the fiend be what Braun overcomes? Like, I don't know. I maybe maybe they're just not advertising the fiend and he shows up at the pay per view. But anyway, if well, the... that's the best part. It could really go anywhere yeah, with this. Yeah, because you really don't know. They could do a lot with this, but you know, that, that's also a scary part too. You know, WWE could easily kill this feud in a heartbeat if they wanted to. Or, you know, but seemed, I think uh, mm-hmm. if Bray wins, I mean, that would make sense, too, because he's also a merchandise uh, machine mm-hmm. as of late. And on top of, of that, Braun can get a rematch and the program can continue either way, really. Right. But yeah, I think I think the heel winning over the big baby face gives the baby face a reason to chase more. And I mean, sure, Strowman's been chasing a long, long time. I won't say that he was the bridesmaid for the, like the longest time before Roman Reigns had to pull out of WrestleMania 36. But I think he just. I think Bray's got to got to regain the belt here. I think and I think he will. But that's just my prediction. But you you think Braun is going? Yeah, you think Braun's going to retain? Mean, so uh, if I'm thinking like, I guess past bookings, mm-hmm. I think um, if Wyatt is the Firefly Funhouse like sweater guy, then I think Braun got it. But if uh, they're gonna cut it short for his reign, then yeah, Bray Wyatt might win it with uh, the Fiend gimmick. Mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah, I'll just say Braun for now because I really want this to keep going because I'm actually kind of invested in this. Uh, well, I mean, regardless of who wins, I think there's a chance that you get more than one title match out of these two guys. I think this goes on past this. I think that's pretty pretty inevitable. Oh, for sure, especially since there's no other, I guess, from SmackDown, any yeah. top contenders, especially with Roman out of the picture, mm-hmm. literally, because they've been not referencing Roman in any way. Did no you? Yeah. Players. Did you notice they cut him out of the Rollins winning the belt at 31? Yeah, what was up with that? They're acting like he's CM Punk or something, and I... It's because um, he's not showing up to work, and they really want him to work when he doesn't feel safe to work during this uh, pandemic. It's just a scummy, <sighs> scummy thing to do. I mean, it's... That's weird. He was their golden child, and they just cut him out of Rollins, like, winning the belt. Like, that was weird to me, man, that they cu- they purposely cut him appearing in that out. It's like, I mean, I, I grant him, like, my most, like, respect for his decision to not show up at the biggest, you know, pay-per-view of all time because he doesn't feel safe. Mm-hmm. And they're just gonna cut him short like that. Just not reference him, not say his name, not even show visuals at all. Even on their websites, they're showing Make a Wish stuff with John Cena out of all people when he's obviously in Hollywood. Um, mm-hmm. They're not showing any Roman Reigns or whatever. So it's it's really weird. Never thought this day would come. <laughs> yeah, it's really strange times. Strange times brings out the strangest in people, I suppose, is what uh, you know is what's going on here. But so that's one of the world title matches. Again, that's three straight SmackDown championship bouts. And here's the one and only straight up Raw match on the pay-per-view. And that is the WWE Championship match. Drew McIntyre defending against the Monday Night Messiah himself, Seth Rollins. Now, this has been built up all right. I mean, Seth is basically saying, like, he has to beat Drew so Drew doesn't become hated like he did, and it's kind of bringing in a bunch of different things, and Drew kind of having to fight off Murphy, and it's just been built up all right. And, I mean, the caliber of these two athletes is really good, so I'm sure they'll put on a, a good match at the actual pay-per-view. I mean, this is something I'm kind of looking forward to. It's probably the yeah, only the- thing... This is probably the only thing other than, like, the money in the bank stuff that I'm looking forward to on the actual card is, is this match here. Yeah, because these two are, like two of the best workhorses uh, of of the WWE, so it's it's going to be something, unless they're going to make it very storyline. Like, I could see Murphy, like, interfering nah. if they wanted. Well, under the situation, I think they're just going to let them go out there, have a match, and that'll be it. I know? mean, that's that's what I want, mm-hmm. but, I mean, just to be safe, quote-unquote, if, if Murphy comes out and disrupts stuff, uh, I guess that's a title change I could see, but I don't want that, but that's, um... Yeah, we'll see because they did have Rollins and uh, Owens just fight it out. Yeah, twice <laughs> at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. 
And as I said, again, your reasoning for Strowman, I think with McIntyre, they built him up to the point where I think this is an easy retain for him. Yeah, I was going to say, know? this is kind of like parallel in um, Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt. Yeah. Uh, from, so, um, yeah, I'll say Drew will retain it. Yeah, like, I mean, the match will be probably very good. It'll be, you know, it'll probably be the best, like, straight up match of the show if they give it time and let these guys mm-hmm. do their thing. I mean, it won't be, like, as I said, without a, without a crowd and an atmosphere, you're not going to get any, like, classic, classic perfect bouts in wrestling right now. That's just the situation. But at least this is still, like, a match that'll be solid and or even more than solid, very good that you can look forward to for a belt that's on a pay-per-view card. Like, at least this feels pay-per-view worthy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this is a, a match worth putting on pay-per-view that's, that's for a championship, let alone a, a world title. I think this match fits the bill for that, and it's good that you have at least, you know, even even Braun and Bray, I think, is worth having as a world championship match. So at least in, in the main event title pictures, they have two matches that are that are compelling and have the right talents in them. So at least you have that going for this, uh, this here Money in the Bank show. But what say you? Uh, I mean, the match that I think is... Like you're saying, like pay-per-view cal- uh, caliber worthy, you know, in this, you know, weird situation, to me is uh Rhea Ripley and Charlotte. Like I felt like this was a pay-per-view bout, you know, even though no audience was there. So Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins definitely can uh, replicate what uh, Rhea and Charlotte. Have yeah, you're talking. You're talking about just like two workers who really worked well yep. together, and just even just without a crowd, you you yep. got invested despite there were no crowd. Yeah, because I would I would argue and say that Rhea and Charlotte as a as a traditional wrestling match was the best like straight it up was. wrestling match of the the two nights. Right, so yep. it's a good point for that. So if, if Drew and Seth can kind of match that for their championship, it could be something to see for sure. Yep, and that's definitely what I expect uh, from these two. So now, again, we're going to split it up between two, but apparently we are to believe that both the men and women's Money in the Bank ladder matches are happening at WWE headquarters simultaneously at the same time. So you have all the women fighting at the same time that all the men are fighting, but let's highlight who's in the women's match. So on the Raw side of things, we have Asuka, Shayna Baszler, and Nia Jax. And then on the SmackDown side of things, we have Dana Brooke, Lacey Evans, and Carmella. So... I have a two. I have a couple thoughts about this. So Asuka, she could. I mean, she's been a, a very entertaining aspect of Raw for like the last like two months now. She's really been. Yeah. She's really been showing off her personality, yelling in Japanese, just being like as 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 over the top as possible, and it's been great. But I don't know she's if she's having gonna, fun. Yeah, well, I can. We we could all see that. And I mean, she's just gonna be like that much more over when there's crowds around. Like, I mean, she's gonna be just as as big as she was before. You know, people oh went God. into self isolation. But then you Asa have is is mm-hmm. like the only woman that has never like let a crowd down. Like they've always felt I've always felt the same for Oscar. Well, I mean, no it, it really what. helps that yeah. Too. I mean, it really helps when you're the best actual female wrestler that signed to WWE too, right? I mean, her being like I think she is the best female wrestler they have under contract. I think oh, I don't, I don't I think believe that too. I don't think that can be disputed, right? So that helps. But then you uh, have good contender is EO though. Like, yeah. And yeah. They're, they're both so good. I can't decide. Like you, you can't. Yeah. Well, I give I give Oscar a bit more because she's been around longer, right? So oh, she's yeah, of she's course. more seasoned. I think Asuka's better. Yeah, yeah, she's more seasoned, right? She's got more years under her belt. So. But the closest runner up to me. Is oh Eo. yes, is EO in NXT. That's absolutely for sure. She's mm-hmm. definitely among the best, if if not the best worker of the NXT women's division. Of course, they're both Japanese, you know, right? So like it's yeah. like. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah, I think I think Joshi wrestling is the best women's wrestling there is. Like I have never seen such athleticism and like charisma from any women other than Joshi wrestling. Like, uh, what's her name? You you Yuka Sakazaki from AEW. Yes, she can pull off some crazy stuff, and and she's so small and tiny. Same thing for Riho. Like, oh my goodness, they're. All these women stemming from uh, Joshi wrestling, there they can do some crazy things. Yes, Riho is an unbelievable worker. Like just she's she's like 20, 22, 21. Uh, she's the same age as Tyler Bate. So how yeah, she's, yeah, she's incredibly yeah. like talented that young. It was even Bate himself. If we're gonna talk about people that young, right? Like I can't Yo. believe how well Tyler Bate can can work at at that young of an age. It's at like, that, I mean, he did win that title. You know, he was the first the UK champ at nineteen. At nineteen, he was right before he turned twenty. Months before he turned twenty, it's crazy. One of the best, one of the best at it, and he's younger than I am. <laughs> so like, Tyler Bate is 
he's like <sighs> he'll never disappoint anyone when he, he gets, no, steps into the I'm, ring. I'm excited every time he's in there with somebody I know who can go with him because then it's like, oh, this is gonna be something to see. But you Whether know, it's what? tag team or like a singles run. Mm-hmm. I, Tyler Bate can pull anything off. Oh yeah, he's 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 a he's a he's a beast. <laughs> What, what, big strong boy or big whatever. Boy, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, then we got Shayna Baszler in here, who I'm thinking they might give it to her because of one of two reasons. She's new to Raw. She just come off from losing to Becky Lynch, and they need to give her something to kind of revitalize the dumbest, her the dumbest going forward. I know it was stupid, but they did it, and now it's like <laughs> she's there and she's qualified for this match, and it's usually carbon cut for a heel to win it and cash in cheaply so it's like it seems like that would be the way to go but then, like all the women on the raw side are all heels because then you've got Nia Jax who I mean she doesn't need it I don't think she's a good investment going forward she's I don't know I know she doesn't mean to hurt a lot of people but that's been like clouding her career for like the longest time she just got back from double knee surgery and she's in a ladder match I mean that's that's smart right like that's that's real smart but again, it's only a ladder till you climb up to the roof. So maybe she'll have nothing to do with the ladder on the roof. Who knows how it's gonna go? I mean, she could get beat up in the, you know, get teamed up by all the women in the match and take it out in, the, in an office or something for all we know. But uh, yeah, she's a heel too in this. She's the, the what, what do they call it? The the, ir- the irresistible force or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. I don't. I, she hasn't really improved much since being on the main roster, but she, she's still reckless as ever. Yeah, she's horrible. related to the Rock, so she's got a job for life. And, you know, I don't want to say nepotism, but nepotism and. I just, I definitely don't see her winning this, but she's in the match. And we've got Dana Brooke, who, you know, bless her heart for getting a, a pay per view spot, but Dana, you, you ain't winning. You know, like, I, I, the closest, I was actually like, shocked to see her qualify over Naomi and win that qualifying match. I'm like, oh, they're giving her a pay per view spot. Yeah, Good that, for her. Weird. Good because for her. Naomi's Naomi. She could do some really, like, acrobatic stuff mm-hmm. anywhere. It's, you know, in an office building, that'd be entertaining, but Dana Brooke, I guess. Congrats. Yeah, her. good for getting a pay per view spot. You like know? the best, like the closest she's got to a title shot was, uh, I think, what's her name? Uh, Rhonda. Rhonda. She lost to Rhonda in like seconds. Yeah, that was like a, that was when, that was like over a year ago. That's when Rhonda was still champion. You know, like yeah. that's a long, that's, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not, you, you can't say, oh, a long, long time ago when it's just like, like a, a year and a bit ago, but still, it's like well over a year ago now. So. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, she's got a pay per view spot. She gets to compete in this thing. Good for her, but she's definitely ain't winning. Lacey Evans could have a shot, I guess, but like, I don't really see it. I mean, she's, I mean, she you could, you could just book her against Bailey later on, and <laughs> she can have a championship match like a noble baby face without winning a briefcase. So I don't think she needs to win this. And then Car- Carmella is just a one hundred percent red herring as a threat in the match, where it's like, oh, she won before. Well, that means she might be able to win again, but you know she isn't going to win again. You know, she's just in there because she's won it before, and it casts some doubt by going, oh, could she win it again? But I just, I see her as a red herring, so I don't see her winning again (laughs) under any circumstances. So really, I think it comes down to mostly Asuka and Shayna. So, Mm -hmm. like, like a Raw winner for sure. Again, maybe even Nia, but I doubt it. I think really the two contenders are Asuka and Shayna for winning this thing. But I think they do give it to Shayna in the end. What's what's your opinion on on the women in this match and who you think is going to win? Uh, for me, I, I'm in the same ballpark as you, but I want to add Lacey Evans to the to the picture. Oh, but... I, I did say okay. If there's a baby face that's gonna win, it's gonna be her. If a baby yeah, face the, wins, yeah. yeah. But I just and I was see... gonna ask when was the when was the last time a baby face won a uh, won the Money in the Bank for anyone for as, men or women? Well, Bailey was a baby face when she won it last year. She won it last year. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, mm-hmm. I totally forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Well, how wait? How long was that run uh, with the briefcase? She cashed it in on Charlotte that night. <laughs> oh yeah, because we haven't had a, a good program with the briefcase in a while. Yes, the last two winners for women have cashed it in the same night. The only person who held it long term was Carmella. So, because then Alexa Bliss cashed it in night of winning it, and then last year Bailey cashed in night of winning it. So, well, if if there's gonna be any like long term, like I guess storyline with the briefcase mm-hmm. i think lacey evans could be pretty good with it um i mean also for oscar and Shayna, they could mm-hmm. really have a program with it but who's winning it though it's uh i feel like it makes the most sense 
for Shayna because they you're, they're killing her character. Oh, um, it's pretty it's pretty badly racked. Yeah, I'd if, say if if they if she they don't give her the briefcase because if she's gonna wreck havoc and then lose by what a roll up from uh from Becky, mm-hmm. I I don't know. Um, I feel like it makes the most sense. Shayna's gonna win it eventually. Mm-hmm. She'll cash it in on the right opportunity. When she should have won it at WrestleMania, but it's okay. Uh, she'll have the briefcase, and she'll be um, former Miss Money in the Bank by then if she does win it. So I'll say Shayna. Yeah, so you could agree with me that Shayna seems to be the most likely winner going into this thing? Yeah, if not, Asuka is a close second, like you said. Yeah, then uh, Lacey Evans in third if they go with the baby face. So we have yeah, pretty it, much the same thought process yeah, on this match. It's just that Shayna needs it. That's she does need it, which is why I'm giving it, it to her, because if she doesn't win, I think, like, what do you do with her? I think she just kind of... It, loses more and more momentum it's funny losing momentum in front of nobody it's crazy how they even squander talent in front of no audience for the audience to perceive them as losing momentum it's crazy it's funny how they can just botch things left and right it's just i don't even know what to say if if they kill her character i mean it wouldn't even be a surprise you know it's they have killed you know great wrestlers you know i know i know but with Shayna, this is especially a thing where you gotta capitalize on her now because she spent her whole prime in legitimate mma and now Mm. she's in the twilight of her career as a wrestler so you need to get the most mileage out of her now i think she's close she's either going to be turning 39 or 40 this year okay like her athletic prime is beyond winding down you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you need to capitalize on while you have her, and yeah, this is the, I think this is their only way to repair her losing to Becky the way she did. So that's that. And then we've of course got the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. Let me again point out that this is both of these matches are supposed to happen simultaneously through WWE headquarters and end up on the roof where there's a ring. H- and have uh, you seen what's in that building, Braden? I, I seen like there's a gym and there's this, there's that. Oh, but yeah, maybe... I was gonna talk to you. Like, why is there a gym in a corporate building? It, okay, it's there... a big, nice gym too. It's not just. It's because that's room. where Vince spends most of his time, and he's got a bodybuilding fetish, and he's got to pound weights <laughs> even while he's at the office. Like that's it's just so weird. It's so needless, right? Like, like this office building has this like state of the art gym. It's like what the hell? Like really? You know, I mean, I, I get the nice cafeteria and you know the cubicles and all that. Yeah, but that corporate, that that high tech gym though, that's something, no, isn't it? I, I I really don't understand why, but I mean, I guess Vince. Yeah, I mean, they can do a lot with that in the match, to be honest. But it's I just keep I'm just so stunned. You know, I'll like, be pissed really if they don't make it to Mr. McMahon's team. office because they've been adding that. Oh, they could even end up in Mr. McMahon's office. So if they don't go to that office, I will want my money back, even though I'm not paying for this pay per view. All right, I'm, so that's... I'm gonna I'm gonna predict that he's gonna if he does show up, he's gonna say it's good shit. That's oh, it. That's good <laughs> shit, as he should. So anyway, the men that are competing for Money in the Bank are as follows. So on the SmackDown side, we have Daniel Bryan, King Corbin, and Otis. And on the Raw side of things, we have Rey Mysterio, Aleister Black, and the recently returned AJ Styles. And on Raw this week, he just came back, and yeah, I got buried, but it didn't really bury me, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, you know, you got buried, like, in a cinematic way that would, like, kill somebody, like, in in real life. You would have suffocated. (laughs) That's a death, dude, and he's like, ah. He just comes out and just beats Umberto for the millionth time, because, you know, whenever AJ and Umberto have a match, Styles beats him. Happens every time. They had a few matches for the U.S. title last year. AJ won every single one of them. Because, like, it's like when uh, yeah, when Umberto meets AJ, he just can't beat him. Ever. He can't ever beat him. Well, granted, <laughs> this time he was he was very exhausted, you know, having to win, what, three matches in a row or so? I know, but not. still, it's like, it's, 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 yeah. it's, he suffers the same fate under AJ Styles every like, time. I guess it's like his, like, Grim Reaper. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like it's his demon he can't beat is AJ, so... Um, so AJ qualified because like for a while they put Apollo Crews in the match and then realized, eh, do we really want, uh, Apollo taking up a pay-per-view spot? Not really. And they removed him from the match due to a bullshit injury that, you know, a kayfabe injury removed him from the match, which means they thought, eh, we could put somebody else better in here and woo better than AJ, which I mean, yeah, he's a bigger star for sure. He definitely puts a, a threat in the match. And since he is a heel and is a heel much higher on the totem pole than King Corbin, who's the only other heel in the match. And Money in the Bank is usually a heel concept. I think they have him return to win this thing. I know really? I know Brandon seems to think Alistair Black is going to, 
to take the briefcase, but like you're gonna have Alistair, this this cre- this guy who, who's dark and all that, like carry around this this goofy briefcase for a few months and cash in like a cheap person. Unless you do the Rob Van Dam thing where he cashes in like and has a pay per view match against the champion down the line and he announces it ahead of time and they book a match due to him cashing in that way. But most of the time it's it's a heel it's a heel gimmick. And AJ's a heel. He's clearly the biggest heel star in the match. The only other heel is King Corbin. And I can't see them giving him a briefcase. So, and You'd like... you be surprised. Well, like AJ, AJ, I'd be surprised, but like they clearly value AJ more. I think that's abundantly yes. clear. And he just came back and they put him in this match and they're, they're going to have him have a big comeback and qualify and not win. I don't know about that. <laughs> what do you think? Well, I just want to. I just want to say that Otis, Daniel Bryan, and Rey Mysterio are not going to win it for sure. Yes, um, no, they're they're definitely not. I, I know that you know Rey Mysterio and Daniel Bryan. They had their time. Uh, a run with the briefcase would just be a bit, bit odd. You know, it's not. Get, a, they're past it. They're not going to get. Yeah, a run they're, with them. they're yeah. already like you know fulfilled and they are. Career they are, as I've put it, the veteran presence in the match to keep it going, yeah. to give it some structure, to be the veterans, right? And to be like, you know, baby faces that people know. People know Daniel Bryan. People know Rey Mysterio. They're in there for name value and their veteran presence, but they're not going to win. And, um, yeah, I can see why Brandon believes Alistair would win, but it's, um, I guess. It's like just said, not, it's, it's, it's not in tune. Gimmick. It's not in tune with his character. He's going to carry around a briefcase and then either A, cheaply cash in like a heel, which goes against everything he's been built up and, and built as for the last, like, we'll say half a year. Or B, he cashes it in like Rob Van Dam did, where he announces and books yeah. his own pay-per-view main event, and he does it that way. But I mean, maybe they could do that with him. But then he's still got to carry it around that. Co- but then he's got to carry around that this this happy-go-lucky green briefcase everywhere. You know how goofy that's gonna look in his entrance. I don't mean I know aesthetics <laughs> don't mean everything in wrestling. There's a lot of goofy shit in wrestling. I know that. I get it. But can you well, see him? Coming well, up and he... doing his pose where he's like leaning back and he goes up and there's a fucking green briefcase in his hands. I don't know. Well, what if he redesigns the briefcase? Like... Okay, then I'd be more willing. To... <laughs> yeah. Okay, he could do that. Yeah, yeah, he could do that. But still, it just doesn't seem like a thing that's going to help build his character is that he's got to win the briefcase. What if he just keeps winning the way he has and earns his rank up the roster? I don't know. I mean, there if there's a baby face that's got a shot at winning, it's him because he's new and he's a guy to invest in and he's been there every week since the pandemic. But it just the money in the bank in general is always usually a heel concept. I don't know. I I, yeah. I just I struggle seeing Alistair winning the briefcase for whatever reason. I could maybe he's got more of a shot than Ray and and, and Brian and, and Otis. He's the only baby face with a shot, but I don't see him winning in the end. Do you kind of yeah. see him winning? Is he your choice as well, or do you or you think it's somebody else? Okay, well, let me just say, yeah, I can see him winning it, but. It's uh, like you said. It's weird, and I think he needs it the most. But it's I don't know. It's it's just it's just weird. Like you're talking about like a whole gimmick. Just you know, it's, and he's a baby face too. It's it's a very big heel thing. Because when was the mm-hmm. last uh, I guess male uh, baby face? <laughs> the monster center? in the bank, and he turned heel with Roman, and they had a hell in a cell that got thrown out by Brock Lesnar, and it led to nothing. So Braun, during his Money in the Bank run, turned heel. Okay. And cashed it in as a heel, but he was the last is, guy at the time of winning it being a babyface. Who was the, I guess, fully babyface during the briefcase run? Oh, uh, my God. Okay, so there was Seth in 2014, Sheamus 2015. Dean! Dean! Well, cash that was, in, he, he cashed in the night of, though. Yeah, but that's the last full one that I can remember. It was Dean. Uh, or uh, Moxley. Yeah. Is there another wrestler's face that had an actual briefcase run instead of cashing in like that quick of a notice okay mm, that's a long time ago now that's a really long time ago so um it's always been a heel thing and I've it always, has it has I've for always, the most part my favorite run personally is uh rollins he's always had that thing i, I couldn't understand oh him. yeah he had the, the cash Rollins. in at the during in the main event of wrestlemania the only time it's oh, ever yeah. a been cashed in during the WrestleMania main event and B during a match. Cause usually they do it after the, the finish has happened, but he did it like while the match was still in progress in the WrestleMania main event. It's probably the most famous cash in of all time. Yeah. Yeah. And then also when he was just still holding the briefcase, he would always curb stomp their heads into it. And I'm like, wow, over time, do you see all these dents that has been building through 
you know, his career just curb stomping. Yeah, everyone. he was he was the best. He was, I mean, other uh, Edge made it a thing, right? So Edge will always yeah. be like the definitive the money in the bank. Yeah. But Seth was like the best one since him, I think, right? But guess what? They were yeah. both what? They were both what? Heels. Both heels. Heels, exactly. right? So it's There's... like. <clears throat> when Ziggler cashed it in, was he a face or was he a heel? He was technically a heel because Del Rio was a baby face who had been attacked by Swagger, oh, Hager now. But he, you know, suffered an ankle injury defending the belt the night after WrestleMania in a handicap match against Zeb Coulter and, and Swagger. And he pu- he pulled off the win despite his ankle being injured. And then Dolph came in and cashed in on the scraps. But he was a, he was a heel when he cashed it in. And he was a heel for the whole time he held the briefcase. So all the moment, the legendary cash-ins you remember with guys holding it long term, they were all, all heels. heels. Yeah. Every single one of them. <clears throat> So, uh, oh, yeah. the last, I guess, like, you got to go back to CM Punk. He was a babyface when he won and held the briefcase for a couple of months, but that was, like, back in 2008. That's yeah. a long time ago. And, again, all the people... And it wasn't a fulfilled <clears throat> run, too. Like, he cashed it in, and he didn't even feel like... No, he, he was did. he was a, he was a second thought, and, like, just a yeah. mid, mid-card world champion, and John Cena, Batista, Shawn Michaels, and Chris Jericho exactly, were all yeah. featured above him. So, yeah, but, yeah. The, the long-term ones that you remember were the guys holding it for a long time and having these, like, brilliant cash-ins, all heels. So that's why I'm thinking that, you know, they brought AJ back. He's a heel. He's a he's a decently big star. He just came off that, that Boneyard match. He qualified, and you're just going to have him have a huge return and not win? I don't know. I don't see that. But who is your definitive uh, pick for winning the men's money in the bank? I'm, I'm going with AJ on this one. For this entire card, I'm just gonna, I'll, I'll echo you. It's really? Nugget. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we'll get most of these right, if not all. It's it's it's, yeah. a, it's a very safe card if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, except we're switching. You're going with Braun on the Universal Title match, and I'm going with Bray. Right? Oh that's yeah, the, I forgot about that's that. That's the only yeah. one where we differed. That's literally yeah. the only one where we differed. So. But other than that, yeah, it's 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 very it's very safe. So. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. But if, yeah, if, if, if Brandon were here in this call, he would still be sticking with Alistair. 100% he would still be sticking with Alistair, even after all the points I brought up. <laughs> Which yeah. is good. At least he's like he's stuck in his opinion and believes in what he thinks is going to happen. I like a contrasting opinion. Don't get me wrong, but... Oh, yeah, but I mean, I'm just... This is just how I feel. Yeah, you know? I mean, they bring AJ back. He gets, has this big qualifying moment. He's off that big Boneyard match, which is the thing that everybody loved about this year's WrestleMania. And you're just going to have him return to, to not win this big thing in a, in a concept that usually is done best by heels. And they could have him have a long thing where he cuts promos with that briefcase. And then, oh, yeah. You know, People like it's so great with that briefcase. Oh, yeah. Walking out with it. Oh, my goodness. Like it, it fits AJ way more than, than Alistair, in my opinion. 100%. It'd be better for AJ. Even it, But then the people who will go, oh, well, Braden, he's a main eventer already. He doesn't need it. Brock didn't need it last year. They still gave it to him. Randy Orton didn't need it in 2013. They gave it to him. So, Sad. you know, it's not like AJ's the first former world champion to win this thing, right? Well, here's so. the second thing is the, you know, Brock, he wasn't even in the match. To, to oh, the yes. Match the, 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 well, so he, wa- he was in at the end, but like. Yeah, but he didn't even, he wasn't even in the match, so. No, but apparently he was the winner. He was declared the winner and he held the briefcase for a bit and cashed in on Seth, so. Uh, wait, so I got you two questions, Brian, before mm-hmm. we go. All mm-hmm. right, so first off, why is Otis here? <laughs> like, I think it's just because he's been involved in a big SmackDown angle, and, like, I mean, he was getting the crowd behind him pretty big, and I think it's just since he's been here and been involved in an angle that's been doing well since the pandemic, they're just kind of giving him a big pay-per-view spot. And he's a lovable babyface. I mean, why not put a lovable babyface in a match, even if there's no crowd? I mean, at least he's somebody who the fans were getting into and people were still invested in his storyline after the pandemic happened. I have no issue with Otis's inclusion in this match, you know? So does that kind of clear it up a bit? Like, does that, you know? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, now that we have gone over the whole card and you've heard our predictions on the winners of the matches for this year's money in the bank, 2020 pay-per-view where superstars are going to climb the corporate ladder I now swing it to that time of the podcast again, folks. It is time for the cheapest of plugs. So, Gabe. Wait, real quick, real quick. Okay, real quick. cutting me off. All righty, what do we got? I, uh, I have a really interesting note before we go. Okay, shoot. They, almost all of the competitors, the male ones at least, keep talking about 
throwing people off. Do you think we'll see that and who will be thrown off? Ah, uh, well, uh, how many crash pads are they going to have at the base of that building? Uh, or is it going to be like a big like studio thing where they do like a big, you know, they toss them and there's this giant, you know, those big giant, like they look like enormous uh, air mattresses, but they're huge and thick and like yeah, stuntmen jump out of the buildings and fall on them. Maybe they could do something like that, but I have no idea who would toss who. It's funny that the baby faces are talking about throwing people off or are they talking about getting thrown off themselves? No, no, actually throwing off their opponents. Okay, like, that's not yeah. very babyface to do, but uh, <laughs> I guess it like, shows all, that... All the, like, all these male competitors, they're talking about throwing someone off, and uh, I feel like someone in this match is going to be quote-unquote thrown off. Yeah, somebody's going to do, like, the big daredevil the big daredevil spot stunt for the cinematic show that is Money in the Bank. I don't know who it could yeah. be, but if they're teasing it, maybe they'll do it, or maybe... It's just a tongue-in-cheek way to make people tune in and go, oh, are they really going to do that? They fucking tune in and nothing happens. So it's like, you know. Well, it's an interesting thought, though. You know, If you think about it, you mm -hmm. know, if any of these people get thrown off, like let's start off with Daniel Bryan. I think that makes sense because he might want to spend more time with his family. Or Rey Mysterio, if he's – I think his contract is expiring soon. I don't know. I think um, it expires in the fall. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I don't know if they throw off Otis, that could just make him more babyface, if anything. Yeah, we'll and see if yeah. yeah. I guess we'll find out to see if anybody has another kayfabe death on WWE television <laughs> via a cinematic. Come back a month later. Yeah, <laughs> via a cinematic experience, and then come back as if nothing happened, like AJ did. So now again, I will reiterate my point. <laughs> It is now time for the cheapest of plugs. It's that time of the podcast. So, Gabe, you know what you can do here. If you got anything you want yes, to sir. plug before we finish up, now is the time. As of late, um, in my uh, local wrestling area, the D.C., Maryland, Virginia wrestling region, uh, I have started a podcast featuring the best talent there is of, a, of the DMV wrestling region, the Grapital region, as we call ourselves. Uh, my first episode was with uh, the head booker of Primetime Pro Wrestling, who has been making a, a bunch of headlines on newspapers all over the world for being, well, all over the world, all over the region, I'm sorry, for um, being, I guess, the first promotion, uh, wrestling promotion in Washington, D.C., and having also a big uh, gay pride event as uh, from last February that also made headlines. So, yeah, we're just constantly making more headlines at Primetime, and I interviewed him and just how he just came to fruition in uh, pro wrestling, started primetime pro wrestling, and therefore uh, here came, uh, his name is Mr. Gator. So if you have time to check it out, listen to my podcast uh, interview of Mr. Gator. And my second episode will be with a wrestler, which is one of primetime pro wrestling's head, uh, head wrestlers there, in my opinion, who might be a future champion. And just the first a uh, wrestler to come out of the crab wrestling uh, school to fight head talents like uh, Nick Aldis, uh, Jonathan Gresham, Fred Yehi, and and more. Um, Isaiah Frazier, the gifted one. So uh, look out for that. And to follow me on social media, I am Gabe Nozid, one word, on Twitter, Instagram, and for some miscellaneous wacky videos, uh, check out Nozid. Um, but yes, oh, and my podcast is on my wrestling channel, Nozid Wrestling, under the moniker how goes it with Gabe Nozid? So the the podcast is available on YouTube only. Is that the only yep, platform only that's YouTube. available? Okay, so it's yep, YouTube Nozid exclusive. Wrestling. Okay, so that's Nozid Wrestling for for Gabe's interviews and and various wrestling content of his own outside of Apron Bump. So for those of you who have mm -hmm. listened to this via Anchor and or the multiple various platforms that Anchor. Uh, distributes this podcast on. It's available on Spotify and Google Podcasts and, and a couple other. It's it's on at least six or seven different platforms that Anchor distributes it to. Uh, so if you heard it on there, but you're interested in maybe some more, say you are also into Nintendo gaming, you can follow me on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash braster, which features weekly Nintendo commentary and smash speculation throughout the, the buildup to the second fighter's pass in uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate as well as just other content or journalistic things that happen. Like when E3 got canceled, I talked about that and any kind of relevant news that happens in the sphere. And I feel is good, uh, that needs to be covered. I do it on the channel. Um, so, but also if you also found the podcast or the YouTube version, which is also 
uh, exclusive to the Braster YouTube channel outside of Anchor for the YouTube upload. That's also at youtube.com slash Braster, as you, I'm sure, have figured out by finding it through the algorithm or whatever. You can subscribe as well if you liked what you heard and want to hear more and just want to have a YouTube video format for the podcast so you don't feel like listening to it on all the other, other, all the other platforms you want to stick to YouTube. Give that old subscribe button a go because then if you also like Nintendo content too, I do that weekly as well. So you got it all, everything in one go here, right? Like Kind of like the WWE Network, like everything in one spot right so if you like both that's what the channel is all about you can also follow me on twitter that is at braster 93 and if you're into live streaming uh games particularly smash ultimate and i will be doing animal crossing soon uh you can also follow me on twitch.tv slash braster so those are all the platforms there uh thank you very much for listening whether you listened on anchor or any of the various po- uh, podcast platforms that we are available on or if you listen through youtube thank you so very much for listening and we are going to spanish fly on out of here we'll see you next time folks or you'll hear from us next time that is take care <laughs>